all of that snow that fell during November 2014's Twin Lake effect storms amounted to about 210 billion gallons of water. Nearly all of the moisture was sucked up from the surface of Lake Erie, transformed into clouds and dumped in the form of seven feet of snow across the Buffalo-Niagara region. The storm lowered the lake level by 1.22 inches. Scientists know this because of their one years of research at the University at Michigan, the Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research, Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory, Environment and Climate Change Canada among others. The trick now is better predicting colossal lake effect storms before they develop. A state-of-the-art sensor called a sonic anemometer may play a role in such forecasts, according to the Great Lakes researchers. They used data from two such sensors stationed in Toledo and Long Point, ONT, to develop a profile of the November 2014 storms. They did so by analyzing atmospheric moisture and evaporation from Lake Erie and how the heat transfer between the lake and the air fueled the, the massive storm. The storm crippled parts of the region for a week and resulted in at least 13 deaths. The study is one of the first scientific attempts to quantify details about how the atmosphere uses heat and moisture to rob the lake of its water and turn it into snow, and also what conditions wind, waves, and temperature most contribute to brewing up a big storm. These are the first times that anybody has put these kinds of sensor suites on the Great Lakes, said Christopher Spence of Environment and Climate Change Canada. It can provide the volume of water that's leaving the lake and going into the atmosphere. Spence co-wrote a paper on the topic that is scheduled for publication in the American Meteorological Society's Journal of Hydrometeorology. Experts said the data will be used to fine-tune computer forecast models. That could help them better anticipate when dangerous lake effect snow bands will set up, where and how intense they'll be and how long they'll last. When a couple of miles matter, the fine-tuning matters a lot, said Greg Mann, science operations officer at the National Weather Service in Detroit. It should allow us to better characterize the event. Buffalo case study researchers picked Buffalo's record-breaking double storm from November 2014 because it provided the best case study for evaluating how new computer models forecast lake effect storms and verifying how effective those models were in using pre-programmed variables to forecast storms. It was the largest lake effect snowstorm since 1945, said Aimee Fujisaki Manome, a lead researcher from the University of Michigan. It stuck out it's exactly the type of storm forecasters want to better predict and be prepared for in the future. A very slight difference in the temperature of the lake versus the temperature of the air can be tremendously important in the amount of water that evaporates up to that cloud, said Tom Nizial, the winter weather expert at the Weather Channel. Nizial said one of the biggest challenges forecasters face is predicting snowfall rates.